fashion is important to us all. Let's analyze the changes coming in your wardrobe this season. Fall and winter fashion begins with coats. Let's see what will give your new coat its up-to-the-minute look and keep it new looking next year, too. The full coat is still a popular favorite. But notice how its fullness has shifted. It's no longer a tent coat. This year, it moves inward toward the body at the front and flares out more than ever at the back. Now let's take a look at the straight tubular coat of last year. But now, it has a more flaring hemline and is definitely shaped in at the waist. Not quite an hourglass yet, but getting near it. We used to call this the cocoon coat, remember? Narrow at the shoulders and hem. But now, the oval shape has narrowed through the body into a semi-fitted line and widened out at the hemline. Here are the typical coats in motion. See how enormously full this green nubby wool one is, but at the back only, while the front hangs straight. And here's the fitted coat, which is replacing the tube silhouette. You'll see some even more fitted than this. The one you see is in black diagonal ribbed wool with a mink collar. Next is the semi-fitted coat in taupe ribbed wool. The sleeves are set in very low and slanted forward. This new sleeve is a significant point to watch for. In suits last year, it was the hip bone length bulky jacket over a slim tapered skirt. This year, a shorter jacket, more fitted in front with a loose or flaring back. The skirt much softer in line, no longer tapered. The long jacket suit of 1960 was like a tube with a slimmer tube of a skirt beneath. Now, the new jacket about the same length is a bit more fitted and with fullness in the skirt. The suit jacket with the open swinging box jacket went over a skinny skirt last year. But look now. The skirt has lots of swing and plenty of walking room, too. A welcome change in fashion. Let's watch the suits in movement. A gold and gray tweed suit spotlights the waistline with its short cutaway jacket. The high-rising neckline forms a rim collar, a new idea in suits and coats. The skirt has big, soft front folds. A long, fitted jacket suit takes its flared shape from deep folds which form panels at the front and back. This buttonless box jacket and cone-shaped skirt is in one of the key fashion colors for fall, golden orange. Dress silhouettes are full of news, too, but there are three basic shapes you should remember. The beltless semi-fitted sheet. Now it has become a more fitted princess dress because it has added a noticeable flare at the hem. The popular always becoming over blouse is as newsworthy as ever. But the new addition is a wider skirt, full of movement. Next we come to the softly bloused silhouette of 1960. It had a straight and narrow skirt. However, this season, you can readily see motion is the key word which influences fashion. Let's see our typical dresses in action. The slender princess dress in brown ribbed wool with godets that widen at the hem. An added fashion point, the little fur choker with a ribbon tie. Next, the long overblouse. This one for evening in gold and ivory brocade with a skirt of knife pleats. New sleeves end just above or below the elbow. A sapphire blue blouse dress in lacy wool, tailored but with fullness added by big front panel and large pockets. Behind the fashions of any season, there's the fascinating story of the great American fashion industry. Without equal anywhere in the world, a unique blending of mass production methods and craftsman skills. And here is its symbol, the ILGWU label, signature of the 450,000 skilled men and women who make up the International Ladies Garment Workers Union. Men and women proud of their union, through which they have gained a fair share in the American way of life. Proud of their skills, 
which helped to make American women and girls the best dressed in the world. Matching a pattern to a plaid, an intricate business calling for the kind of knowing touch that comes only with years of experience and the true craftsman's love of perfection. This is a sample being made. You may find replicas of it in your favorite store today. A perfect fit, only because this man and others painstakingly translated the designer's line into the finished product. After the garment is cut, the operator takes over, meticulously guiding the fabric on its way, a craftsman's hands and a craftsman's face. Pressing. This is only the first of two or three a garment gets. It calls for strong arms and a gentle touch. A skilled presser can make his iron follow every subtlety in a designer's sketch. And here they do what is known as finishing, sewing so skillfully that the shrewdest eye will have difficulty in finding the stitches. Her face a study in concentration, while her hands move swiftly and surely, as if they have a life of their own. The apparel industry is the only great American industry in which the worker's hands remain more important than the machine. Here they clean loose threads from the garment, a minor operation but indispensable to perfection. Another pressing operation, the final one before the garment is packed. This interesting machine blows steam up through the fabric to soften it so that the garment will fall gracefully into the designer's line. Many different skills go into the production of a garment all of them symbolized by this inconspicuous but important ILGWU label. A label that speaks for the genius of a great American industry and the pride of the 450,000 men and women who provide its essential skills. Skills found not only in the tailoring shops which produce the most costly apparel, but in shops producing apparel in every price range. Notice how precisely the blade of the cutting machine does its job. But the union label stands for more than skill. It symbolizes human values. Sewn right into the clothes you wear. security, and fair treatment. The dignity of a voice in determining one's conditions of employment. The sense of participating on terms of self-respect in the great creative process of a great American industry. A sense of pride, yes. Pride backed by craftsmanship that enables American designers and manufacturers to produce the world's finest apparel for the women and girls of America. Fashion makes news everywhere, at every hour, and from the skin out. Early in the morning, the whole family becomes a style parade. Joni's blue cotton chalet gown is edged with lace. Mother in her easy care wash and wear nightgown and peignoir. Susie, in her storybook red flannelette sleep suit with its own frilly nightcap. Mary shows a flared polished cotton petticoat with dainty bow and edged in lace, ready to go under a dress cut just like Mama's. And now Mama is getting ready for a day in town with other smart friends. Her choice, a gold jersey dress with the new wide pleats in the skirt. Belted, yes, and at a low waistline. Notice how the coat 
combines the gold of the dress in its big gray plaid. That high rim collar rising from a yoke is news. Before Mrs. Craig leaves for the city, she drives the children to school. Sally has a red and green plaid water shedding coat with matching hat. Joan wears a strawberry red cotton dress with the giant pockets all little girls adore. Her wool coat and roller hat are strawberry too. School clothes are as colorful and breezy as autumn leaves. Another lady, very fashion right, wears a semi-fitted suit of pepper and salt tweed with the new easy walking skirt. Her child in a flared orange velveteen coat and matching cap. Two versions of the pyramid jumper, in dark green and in navy cotton, both with starched white blouses. Fashion-wise, too, the child on the right, her dress sports a printed corduroy overblouse. Gray flannel goes to school on all ages, and so does the classic sweater and skirt. 1961 versions in autumn leaf gold with a box pleated skirt and a sleeveless flannel sweater dress with red turtleneck sweater underneath. The rich colors of fall fruits are being worn as well as eaten. Pumpkin, grape, and avocado green. The graceful circular pumpkin coat is wool jersey lined with nylon jersey. And the grape wool tweed is full of news with its flyaway back and high bosom line. The green waist-length jacket emphasizes the box-pleated skirt. These three costumes bridge the year's fashion news in country wools, exciting new wools with great variety and versatility. This taupe, pebble, tweed, and mohair coat is reversible and piped in brown leather. Note the new low placement of the giant patch pockets. Here is a country cape in riding habit material with a slim orange jersey dress beneath. Capes as well as cape-like coats are important. They vary in length from elbow high to floor length. A big bold plaid takes its shape in deep folds on both jacket and skirt. Fashions for fun, and with a sense of fun. Some are really kooky, such as this group of knee ticklers. The bright red and green plaid with its split panel front. The brown tweed short jumper dress over striped jersey. The yellow and gray plaid, simple as a bathrobe, over yellow knit shorts, which look like grandpa's underwear. The liberals and the conservatives in the fall sports picture. Brown and white tweed over blouse with free flared skirt and low placed belt. Turquoise knee length culottes, accented with bright pink sweater. Knit rust pants with a workman's shirt above. Slim fuchsia stretch pants beneath a chunky sweater. And now for a train ride to the big city. A look at what being worn season. For the autumn bride, fashion fills a hope chest. Her sister, an admiring audience, wears a floaty pink chiffon negligee over a pink satin nightgown. The edging in pink marabou. This bride-to-be is wearing a white nylon satin robe strewn with embroidered nosegays of red and green. An all-in-one foundation garment to provide a smooth line under the wedding gown. A touch of applique.
silk slips, and petties printed in the newest bright fashion colors and in a wide range of patterns. A matching set, panty and petticoat with bow knot motif. A shift of turquoise nylon over white, demurely feminine. Lingerie is a faithful companion, a romantic aspect of our fashion life. It shapes, colors, luscious new materials deserve top fashion headlines this year. Dashing off to do some last minute shopping, our bride-to-be in a sheer wool red princess dress with hat and coat to match. Even the taxi seems to know that red and gold are in the fashion picture. The red coat would be collarless except that it rises just above the shoulders. The gold one has a fitted top outlined by arched seaming at the waistline. The dress, of identical color but sheer wool, gracefully scans the figure in the new princess line. Here's the no color look that some fashion experts link under the term mushroom colors. A spongy tweed sleeveless cape with a standaway scarf neckline gives an elegant costume look. This charcoal diagonal wool suit has a very high waistline. With a long flaring jacket. The new fox boa complements this mushroom white wool suit with side closing and flared skirt. Daytime skirts are on the short side. Remember to find your own becoming length about top calf. Here's the cape that's not quite a cape because it's cut out in front to show the dress of the same brown and white flecked coating material beneath. Street clothes with variety enough for everybody. Vivid blue wool in a little short jacket, more fitted at the front and with deep double folds forming panels in the skirt. Red brushed wool is used for the most slender coat you'll see this season. The skirt of the brown and black tweed suit is softly pleated all around. And now here's Mrs. Craig from the suburbs, looking just as chic as her city acquaintances. The Vicunic cape, lined in red fox. Interest again in the belted normal waist here on this green and black tweed gently flared coat. Hats, all with the Millinery Union label, are very much in the news. They hug the head, stand up high, have brims, and of course they belong with the costumes in proportion and in color. Fisher trims the taupe tweed cutaway suit while the emerald green cape sleeve suit is lined in bright fuchsia. The curry whipcord coat has fashion plus, a half scarf and welt seaming. The really fitted suit is back in style and with it comes the full, almost circular skirt. This one in dark plum sheer wool. And here's a bronzine wool gently fitted coat. The hip line as well as the waistline is important in this year's fashion, here emphasized with welt seaming. This orange tweed coat is almost a cape because the sleeves are set just above the elbow. Now we see the familiar overblouse under a full fingertip coat in brown and black check wool. A cape of giant black and white tweed plaid with nothing but cuffs to indicate sleeves. 
A low hip bone belt underlines the bloused back of this berry red wool slender coat. Note the oversized lapels and watch for more deep open necklines on coats and suits. Parties at home are as varied as fashions. Mushroom colors again for late day wear, plus lots of white. A slim sleeveless crepe overblouse with slightly flared skirt. The rolled panel front on the dark green silk gives a little more flair to show its 1961-ness. A chocolate brown chiffon overblouse. The flare is wide and smooth in this white silk and wool costume. This black grape silk dress features stacked pleats carefully pressed. As the sun goes down, fashion takes on a whole range of sunset colors. Taking full advantage of the self-expression that informal evening wear in country homes can offer, each woman can be a star in her own fashionable way. The fuchsia and white plaid wool fringed poncho is longer and worn over velvet tapered pants. Fashion news is solid tops and printed bottoms or vice versa. A thistle silk overblouse with printed wool pants. On the right, the contrast is reversed. A gold and turquoise printed silk shirt with turquoise pants. Red plum wool jersey in a tailored dinner pajama. The black jersey high collared blouse has a red and gold woven full skirt. Fire red velveteen and a chiffon bow blouse top the surprise edition of jester pants in striped wool. Oriental embroidery embellishes this dusty pink full dinner skirt. The evenings in a smart restaurant or at a charity ball bring the full play of grandeur that fashion designers love. Capes, important for evening this year. Here, fuchsia cut velvet balloons into a fascinating effect. Repeated in the skirt. Another cape in gray silk pleated from the shoulders. As romantic as Queen Guinevere in Camelot. A blazing orange satin full length cape. The cape is draped to the side with a huge looped bow to counterbalance the one shoulder effect of the evening dress beneath. Grand as a ball dress, the covered up evening costume. Red and gold paisley brocade. with a slim, high-bosomed, two-piece dress beneath. Another version is softened green velvet and satin. A fur-bordered shawl covers the cowled halter neck bodice of this dress. A masterpiece of subtle cut in gray silk crepe that ends in a minute train. This overblouse is cut as simply as a sweater, but blazes like a crown jewel in its multicolored jewel embroidery. This ice blue satin evening coat is banded with pearl fox. Pearls and rhinestones make an exquisite panel down the dress. The evening dress with a short jacket is equally fashionable. This one is in flowered cut velvet in shades of rose and magenta. It's fitted and flared at the floor. Well, another season, a hundred new fashion ideas. Imagination, good sense, and practical value, all blended into the clothes you have seen. Now a part of your life, as well as a chapter in fashion history. This picture was produced by the ILGWU Union Label Program as a consumer service designed to provide American Winnet fashion information.
you will find an ILGWU label in most of the women's and girls' clothing made in our country, a symbol of human values as well as craftsmanship.